and true my trials and true my pain you have been just enough for me you're more than enough to catch me when I'm falling you're more than enough to see me through you're more than goes by Oh Jesus you were just enough You were just enough And though I know by myself I don't There is no one like you in all the earth, Jesus. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all the sea, how great, how great. Come on, if you serve a great God, can you lift your hands to Him this morning? How great, how great is our God, is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And God will see our great. There's no one greater. How great is our God. All of us room, can we lift up our hands? Open up our mouths, sing. How great, how great.
sing it one more time. Can you lift your hands in the room this morning? Lift your voice straight. What a beautiful name it is What 
a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful hey God nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of what a beautiful name, sing. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name. The name of Jesus. It's the name of His name. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name.
If you don't mind, can you lift your hands? The name of Jesus all over this room. Can you just call Jesus? <laughs> can you just begin to call Jesus? Begin to holler that name. Say Jesus. Jesus for my family. Jesus for me and mine. Jesus for my job. Jesus for that testimony. Come on, begin to call the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you for that name. Lord, we thank you for the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to call Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Let the name of Jesus fill this room. Let it fill your being. Let it fill your home. Jesus everywhere, Lord. It's all about you, oh God. Not about us, Jesus. Yes, God. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Can you lift your hands? Oh, Jesus. Come on, raise it up, raise it up. Come on, lift your voice, sing. Sing your name, your name is a miracle. Your name is the mighty God. Your name, your name, your name is the comforter. Oh, Father, you said you would never leave us. Like offerings, Jesus, Jesus, hey, everybody say your name. Up your voice, miracle. Your name. Can you lift up your voice? Your name. Mighty God. Your name, your name is a miracle. Your name, your 
Your name, your name, your name, Lord. Daddy, we honor your name this morning. We reverence you, Jesus, who came to earth to die for us. You are buried and resurrected. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you that we are in the week of Easter. Thank you by your mercy today is 100 days into 2022. It is by your mercy. It is by your grace. Daddy, that we are here this morning. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, speak to us this morning. Holy Spirit, breathe on us this morning. Let this gathering be one we will remember for good, even up to eternity in the name of Jesus. Fill this place with your presence, Lord. Envelop me with your power this morning. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let's lift our hands above our heads and clap to appreciate the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Help me before you sit down, look at your left or your right and just greet somebody with a warm smile. Not just those, just, not just those, with a smile. And like I've told you, by the grace of God, the issue of your masking is now at your discretion. So if you are comfortable to have on the mask, good. If you are not comfortable, it is up to you. Let's celebrate Jesus this morning. Please be seated. This is our month of resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And whenever you talk about resurrection, you are talking about Easter. Some will say we are entering what they like to call, or we are in what is called the Passion Week. Praise the name of the Lord. I had shared variously from Rev uh, John chapter number 11. But there is something God wants us, a new capacity that God wants us to carry this Easter. John chapter 11 is the story of the resurrection of Lazarus. I am going to read verse 3. John eleven three. Amen. I saw a number of people yawning. Amen. <laughs> it's very early. Amen. Praise God. Verse three. Verse number 5 and verse number 36. And there is one word that you will find common there. Now I read John eleven three. Now, it says, okay, let's take two and three, maybe. Two. Okay, let's take three. It says, Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold him whom thou lovest is sick. Verse 5. Now, Jesus loved 
Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Verse 36. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. The one thing you see in all those verses is the issue of the love of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And I believe this particular Easter, God wants somebody in this church to have a new perspective about the love of God. The love of God. It is so important because many of us understand a little about love. We talk about the love of God from just a theoretical feeling. Oh, they, I read God loves me. Maybe you've never really felt it or you do not even have proper understanding. And because of that, the benefits that should flow to us from this love of God, we do not experience it in our daily lives. Easter is about the love of God to man. As you are thinking of this weekend and this month of resurrection, that scripture we read, those scriptures we read, makes, it, makes us understand that the real fundamental that guaranteed that Jesus will go all the way to resurrect Lazarus was because he loved him. Because he loved that family. Is there somebody here this morning who can say, God loves me? Are you sure? Does it flow from your spirit this morning? I, when I'm, I prepare the message sometimes to teach, like the things I'm asking, what, what is supposed to be the outcome of the message this morning? Why? Because when I was small, Those times when my father was still a teacher. When they are writing the notes, I always saw there was what was meant to be achieved. Teachers, is that correct? Eh? Sister Ochuko. So as I come to church and we are preaching, it is in my heart, what is the purpose, what is supposed to be the outcome if somebody got this message this morning. And it is my prayer that by the time you leave here this morning, the love of Christ will have enveloped and saturated your heart. That you go out and join being very, very aware that in every moment of your life, you are one who is the object of the love of God. He loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son. That's what 1 John 4, 9. He says, in this was the love of God manifested towards us. That God sent his only begotten son, 1 John 4, 9. Into the world. Why? That we might live through him. Praise God. Uh -huh. Come on, help me with this one. Praise God. You know, I am seeing everybody. You better pull up and sit up. 
I may not see those who are online, but I see those who are on site. Praise God. Brethren, I want to talk this morning about the love of God. The message God wants me to, within the minutes available, to drive is to give us about the love of God. Because many of us have no proper understanding of the love of God, many of us in critical moments, we doubt his love. Things are happening to many of us that we are doubting, is God, does God still love me? There are things we have done that we are feeling we have got cut off from God's love. There are many of us who are limiting the extent of the benefits of God's love. Praise the name of the Lord. Brethren, the Bible makes it very clear to us. It was love that made Jesus or even made the sisters to expect that Jesus will heal their brother. They said he loved this man. They sent to him, said this, you are a guy, you love him. If Jesus loves you, it means you can expect him to heal you. This is, if Jesus loves him, even when you are dead, you can expect he will resurrect you. Death is like the end point. To them, it was like, ah, it has got to the worst situation. Whatever situation you are in this morning, as bad as it can get, if you can get a firm appreciation that the love of God is available, there is nothing he will not do for you. I pray that will stir your heart this morning. Many cannot pray because they even think that God has forsaken them. Many of us experience, think of the love of God the way a man loves us. And you know, man's love is very different from the love of God. The Bible says in Romans 8.32, Romans 8.32, it says, He that spared not, his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us how many things? I want you to say it like you believe it. Say, God will freely give me all things because he loved me so much. That he gave up his only son. If he could give his son. There is nothing he will not give to me. I was going to sing a hymn this morning. I pray I'll be able to sing it in the second service. It's called oh the deep deep love. Of the Lord. He's so deep. The, it was so important that I want you to look at the prayer because I'm going to end today to just tell us about a few things about the love of God to stir us up, to make you know that wherever you are going, you must not limit his love. Don't look at the love of God as the love of your father or the love of your pastor or the love of your, your husband or wife. God's love is bigger, better, better, deeper, everything than that one. Praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. Note this question. I, I really just pray that these scriptures will sink into you. Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. This was the prayer of Paul. For all of us, he says he's praying that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith. That we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints 
What is number one? Can we say breast? Number two, length. Number three, depth. And number four, what? Can I take it again? We want to know the breadth of God's love. The length of God's love. The depth of God's love. And the height of God's love. He prayed because he knew many of us have no right understanding. We cannot comprehend what is the depth, what is the height, what is the length, and what is the breadth of the love of God. That's why you used to hear me sing, and some of us have sang before, the love of Jesus is so wonderful, the love of Jesus is so wonderful, the love of Jesus is so wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get around it. Oh, wonderful this morning, within the limited minutes, I want to let us have this understanding. He says so that we might understand, comprehend with the sense, the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. It is when you know that, that you will be filled with the fullness of God. Because God is love. First John 4, 8. For you to be filled with the fullness of God, you need to understand. Every day may we get to know more and more about the depths the height, the breadth, and the length of God's love in the name of Jesus. Because it is amazing. He says it is beyond it is <laughs> it is beyond knowledge. So whatever we, we get to be learning and knowing each day is just a small tip of it. And I'll spend the next few minutes talking about the breadth, the length, the height. And the depth of God's love. And I pray that this will activate us to enjoy more of God from now in Jesus' name. I didn't hear the amen. Have I lost you or you are, if, you are, if you are in understanding this morning, can I see you wave your hands and praise the Lord? I need you. This is what God asked me to do to this service. He says it is where you have this knowledge. It is then that you can have the fullness of God. Because God is love. First John 4, 8. The more of the love of God that you know, the more you enjoy God. Easter is about, it's, it's the expression. It's a celebration. To call our attention to the love of God that brought Jesus to resurrection and ultimately will cause us to be resurrected, to be with him forever. Somebody praise the Lord. The breath. Number one, the breath of God's love. Or what you call the width for those of you who want to use that language. How wide is this love of God? John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What do I pick there? God's love is for all of humanity. It's so wide it extends to every tribe. It extends to every color. 
it extends to every age group, whether you are young or old, God loves you. God's love covers you. It is so wide that it is for the educated and the uneducated. It is so wide, it is for the rich and for the poor. His love is so wide that it reaches to you, to every village, to everywhere. I want to speak to somebody hearing me this morning. It covers everyone despite their religious beliefs or their backgrounds. He loves you. God loves you. If you are short, God loves you. If you are tall, God loves you. If you are black, God loves you. If you are white, God loves you. If you are an Indian, God loves you. You are Chinese, God loves you. You are in the Pacific, God loves you. His love is so wide that it is for the whole world. Let that sink into your spirit. His love is for you are included. It's an all-inclusive love. How wide is his love? Number two. The length of his love. Jeremiah 31 verse 3. Jeremiah 31 verse 3. It says, The Lord had appeared of old unto me. Say, Yea, I have loved you with what? An everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you. The love that God has for us is from eternity. Before you were born, he has kept loving you and its love will abide till eternity. It is that long, the length of his love. It is a love that never gives up or let go. Please, he loved you yesterday, he still loves you today, he loves you tomorrow, he will keep loving you. And there is no way to really think and know about the expression of the Lord length of God's love than the story of the prodigal. The parable of the prodigal son. Even when he turned his back on his father. The father's love was still there looking out for him. I want to tell somebody, I don't care what, how far you've run away from God. God is still, his love is still there. Don't let the devil tell you that God has stopped loving you. He loves you. He might hate the sin you are going through. And today, he stretched forth. He wants to receive you back. It's a love that never lets go. God has not given up on you. That's a word for somebody this morning. God has not given up on you. He still loves you. Even when you turn his back, when we in our folly turn our back on him, or sin grievously, his love never lets go. Because many times also when we are going through difficulties, we are going through tough times, there might be somebody in church this morning who is saying, where is the love of God? I think I'm going through this. God doesn't really love me. If God loved me, why would I be going through this? God's love is still there. Nothing can, can cause it to change or fail. I wrote in my note as I leave the length of God's word, I said his love is unstoppable. Hello, somebody. His love is unstoppable. You see, Pastor, I'll just read that scripture again for you. Romans 8, 38 to 39. Romans 8, 38 to 39. I am taking all this scripture so that you can also write it and get back home and read it. Because this is in God wants to activate in your spirit the knowledge that God loves you. 
Easter is a demonstration, it's an expression, it's a reminder. He said, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height or depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can I hear somebody say amen? Nothing can separate you from the love of God. This morning, if the enemy told you you are seen as you just run back like this, like the prodigal, you know what the father said? He said, This my son was dead, but now he's alive. God wants to do a party for somebody this morning. You came to church, you didn't expect to hear this. You tuned in, you didn't expect, but God sent me to tell you that he loves you. And he's waiting, his love will never give up on you. I'm talking about the love of God this morning. The depth of his love, number three. Ah, the depth of his love. The love that makes a man to die. That's a very deep love. John 15, 13. It says, greater love. John 15, 13. Greater love had no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. That is the deepest love. The love that will make you die for somebody else. Many people will they love you, but when it comes to the point, they can only cry. They will not die for you. This season, he reminds us about the depth of his love that made him to die on the cross. He came from heaven, from the glories of heaven, came to earth and became man. He did not remain as that. He died. He did not just die normal death. He died the most humiliating, the most shameful death on the cross just because of his love. That is some love. And the beauty about it is not, it's, it's deeper even because in Romans chapter 5, verses 7 and 8, Romans 5, 7 and 8. He says, For scarcely for a righteous one will one die. Yet per adventure for a good man some will even dare to die. Verse 8. But God put verse 8 there for me. But God commends his love. Can you switch on verse 8 so they read. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, he did not wait for us to be good guys. He died for us. Never forget the depth of his love. If while you were yet a sinner, he died for you, what will he not do for you now that you have become a child of God? Brethren, he went to the cross for his enemies. Hallelujah. Number four, the height of God's love. How high? Now, you know I like this scripture, First John chapter 3. Verse 1. I like it. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love 
the Father has given unto us that I should be called a son of God, that you should be called the son of God. He did not die. He did not resurrect just to make us have forgiveness of sin. That is high enough. He died, resurrected, so that a non-entity like me will become a son of God. I can put my hand in my pocket and tell you, do you know my father? Hello, I have a father. He is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. That you can be a son of God. An arm robber. A person who was a prostitute. This is the height of his love. That he made us to become sons and heirs of the father. And he did not end at that as I conclude on this. In John 17, 24, he says he wants to take us to be with him. That where he is, we will be so that we will continue to behold his glory. This is the whole issue. This is the content of the love of God. From the foundation of the earth, he has been planning. I pray today that every one of us, by the Spirit of God, our hearts will get loaded with the knowledge of the love of God in the name of Jesus. He says the Spirit of God, he does what? He sheds the love of God into our hearts. And when you now know about this love, and now three things that you must do. Number one, you must love him more. I can't take all the scriptures. Number two, you must love others. Love the brethren. Lay your life for other brethren too. And number three, you must tell others of his love. As you get to have a, the knowledge of his love today, so that you can come boldly to him, the action he requires from you this Easter is to number one, Love God more. And the way to love God is by keeping his commandments. Number two, love all the other brethren. The way he loved you, love people. And number three, don't shut your mouth. Tell other people about this love that made Jesus to die for us. This Easter is a good time. To share the love of God to everyone. And I pray that every one of us, by reason of this message this morning, we step out of these people, this, this, this meeting, knowing that God loves you. He loves you very, very deeply. If it was only for you alone, God will still die. Jesus will still die. He wants you to enjoy the benefits. Because of his love, there is nothing he will not give to you. He is still waiting out there for you. If you have strayed away from him, don't let the devil tell you 
that God will not forgive you. So as I close this meeting, because I'm going to pray, let's bow our hearts. Maybe there may be one or two persons who are going to say, Jesus, thank you for letting me know that you love me. I want to respond back. I want to return home. I want to connect to this lover of my soul. If there is somebody you've been feeling very guilty, you've been feeling overwhelmed, and you want to experience the love of Jesus afresh this morning, wherever you are, just run to this altar. I want to pray for you. As all eyes are closed, if you want to come, please come now. Just rise up and run to the altar quickly. You want to, 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 to be connected by Just rise up and come quickly if you are coming. Jesus is waiting for you like the prodigal. Don't bother about any other person. It might be just you. Just come. Just come quickly if you want to come. I want to pray for somebody this morning. You want to come back home. Is there anybody coming? Because I want to pray now. Okay, the rest of us, let's just pray. Is there anybody trying to come? Okay, all right. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. Daddy, it is the Holy Spirit. You said the Spirit of God will shed his love in our hearts. I pray that as the word has gone forth, Holy Spirit envelop our hearts with a fresh reality of the love of God. And all the things that flow out of your love, healing, resurrection, every manner of provision, whatever your children need this week, because you love us so much, release unto us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. God bless you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give Jesus a wonderful. Let's appreciate it. That song says, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Can we sing it together? Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Shall we just thank God for his love? That love that just, that has seen us through so many challenges. That love that keeps us standing. That love that keeps us safe from all the attacks of the enemy, that love that delivers us, that love that speaks for us. Even when we fail him, he doesn't cast us away. That love that never gives up on us. Let's just appreciate God in one minute for that love. That love that is Easter. Because of that love, he died a painful death on a painful cross so that you and I can have a better future. Let's thank him for that love. Let's appreciate it. Let's appreciate it. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father. And Father, we thank you for your son that you have used even to remind us of that love even this morning. We pray, Lord, that that love will be made more real in his own life also. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to take our offering now. We're going to receive our offering. Um, those of you who have your tithes, you know the drill. The ministers on my left and my right, uh, please come bring your tithes, drop in the baskets, stay, and then we'll pray together. And then those of us who are offerings, wherever we are, we want to give 
I want to give cheerfully. There's a key concerning the love of God in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9 and verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. Thank God for the message this morning. I'm talking about the love of God. And there's a key to activating more of his love in our lives. Um, it says, so let each one give as he proposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves, for God loves a cheerful giver. So we want to activate more of God's love in your life this morning. Give and give cheerfully. Not begrudgingly, not compulsorily, not because we say you should be, but because you want to. You want to, want to. Uh, and because you want to give God something back. Praise the name of the Lord. Why help us. Hallelujah. Lord, you are so good. Blessed be your name. Lord, you are so good. Oh, God. Blessed be your name. Lord, it never be. Never be one. Unheard you may said you are able to make all grace abound toward us that we always have all sufficiency that is never lacking in everything and that we will abound to every good work Father we lay hold on these promises this morning we receive them we ask that you bless this offering let it rise up to you as a sweet smelling servant. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you for the tithes of your children. Open the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing that not enough room will be available to receive. Increase their storehouses and let them be able to increase even their tithes even next time. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Bless you. God bless you. Please rejoice in me. Go to your seats. Hallelujah. 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 Is there somebody who can shout the loudest hallelujah? Praise the name of the Lord. This week is Easter. Hallelujah. Is that how you, you, you are not excited? Now, please note. Every Easter is a time to really celebrate 
the love of Christ and to share the love of Christ to people. And so this Easter, there are four days of holidays. Friday is holiday. Good Friday. How many people will be alive on Good Friday to celebrate? The only Friday in the year that is good. Hallelujah. Good Saturday. And then Easter Sunday. And Easter Monday. Hallelujah. So you should enjoy yourself this weekend. However, I want to please ask you to listen. Every member of this church will be dedicating two of those days to sharing the love of Christ. And that is Friday and Saturday. We are going for what is known in the redeemed Christian church of God as let's go a fishing. I plead if you have never gone, make this the first one. Many years ago, I had never gone for a go a fishing. And my pastor instructed that year I can remember very well. It was Christmas. And for an Ogoni man like me, we spent all our Christmas in the village. For the first time, I was not going to go to my village for Christmas. Because my pastor said, Brother Charles, you are leading some of the, you are going with some of the workers to a particular village in Anambra State. Another of my friends who was an AGM in a bank, he said, you will lead another group to Newi. I was to lead the group to Ojoto. Amen. And we spent three, the whole Christmas in that village. Out of that place came out a parish called Ezebube Parish, King of Glory. Hallelujah. Because the king of that place is also called Ezebube. So we planted a parish by his palace. We are going to do that in Lagos this particular week. And I am standing as your pastor to plead with you that it's a good thing. Go and cancel anything you have planned to do on Friday and Saturday. Say, I'm giving this out to the Lord. I'm going to join them. We are going to somewhere called um, Livingstone Estate. By this to call just off, um, off um, the Orchard Road or the Arabah, yeah, that road. It's not too far, this second toll gate. But you come to church if you don't on Friday by 12 or earlier, the details are there. You'll be hearing, they'll be sent to you if you are a member of this church. Number two. Give out money. Go and make a, a donation. We are going to win souls. We are going to do free medicals. We are going to do free dental care. We are going to give welfare to the poor. And we will walk around and share the gospel to people. And we will have preaching. So it will cost money. Every one who is a member of the body of Christ who get some of his money into soul winning. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. I hope you will take this as a pastoral instruction and a pastoral appeal. On Sunday, we will be here dressed in your Easter dress because we are going to celebrate Easter here. And the assistant general of Asia of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, admin and personnel, the continental of Asia, Africa Continent 3, Pastor Johnson Odeshala will be here on Sunday to be a blessing to us. Hallelujah. So please get ready, invite all your friends. 
Our children have already said they are going to have an Easter camp out. And it will be in this premise. On Saturday, all your children should be brought here. There are some very exciting things you can see on the screen. They'll be taught all kinds of things. They will have fun. And then on Sunday, they will be all here also. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning, I have two very important things to do before we wrap up service. One is to invite some very, very, very special people to church today. Those very special people are those who are worshipping with us for the very, very first time. For the very first time you are coming to this church, we are excited God brought you. And we are going to want to welcome you to church today in our own very special way. We are going to pray for you and bless you and give a token gift. So if today is your first time of worshiping with us, on a Sunday morning, wherever you are, just wave your hands to the Lord so that we can see you. Just wave those hands. God bless you. God bless. Please just take all the things you brought to church. Just come to this altar. Let's say a word of prayer for you so that we can also just come quickly, quickly, quickly. Please, let's keep celebrating them as we go. You are welcome, you are welcome. That's what we are saying. You are welcome. Is there any other person? Resurrection parish, you are welcome. Church, can we please rise up? Can we please rise up, church? We are going to welcome them specially by clapping to welcome them to church this morning. It is you, the church is clapping to welcome this morning. We are excited you are here. Amen. Thank you, church. Now the church is going to do very, something very special. We are going to pray for you. We are going to ask you to ask God for one thing very special to you today. And that thing God will grant it to you. So just bow your head and ask God for something this morning. Church, stretch forth your hands towards them. Father, thank you for this, your very special children. Daddy, this morning we pray for them. Daddy, please bless them. Daddy, please bless them. Let it be well with them. Let today be special in their lives. Whatever they are asking you now, grant it to them as their gift for being first timers here today. Sustain them by your power. Let them enjoy your love. Together, we will make it to heaven. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The final thing we will need to know you, we want to get some of your details and we are going to give you a token gift of our love. So just turn this way and follow our reception team people as the church is clapping for you. God bless you. God bless you church. Be seated. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Very quickly now, this is, this is a big, big day. I'm doing this assignment very important. Very, very important. If you are a man, real man, amen, in this church, please rise up on your feet. You are a real man. Real man. I want to see real men. Real men. Real men. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. Okay. You remain standing because you are going to, I'm going to introduce some very important men to you now. And they will be leading you so that this church will feel you. This morning, it's my privilege to ask to step to this altar this morning, the president of the Men's Fellowship, Agbola Cole. Can we welcome him? Men, I want you to celebrate him as he's coming. Where is he? Is that how you celebrate him? Come and stand by my side. The vice president, Pastor Newton Samagbei, please come. Keep clapping for them. Our general secretary, Bodu Akinkugwe, is not here this morning. Assistant, Bami Bade is he in church this morning. Okay. Then, our prayer secretary, Dipo Ajay, please come quickly. And I think you better remove your suit. I want to see them. Just come. You can carry it. Just come. Assistant Prayer Secretary, Austin Akwometa. Please come. You are not clapping. A woman clap too for them now. These are special people. Our Publicity Secretary, Fayowa Onoche. Where is he? Pastor Fayowa. Keep clapping. These are big boys. Eh? Huh? Then our assistant publicity secretary, Richard Eremosele. Richard Eremosele, where is he? He's not here. Oh. Our financial secretary tre treasurer, Gilos Badejo. Gilos, very good. Our welfare secretary, Tosin Odukoya. Tosin. Our assistant welfare secretary, Peter Amaliri, is not here now. Last but not the least, assistant financial secretary, Yinka Ajao. Please, can you step properly? Line up so, can you see? Men, can you see them? Can you see them? Praise God. The president will just say a word to greet you. Say one word. Then you will do something for me because I really want to also. I'm part of you. You see all these ministers. They are all men. Big men. Is there no <laughs> All right. President, say something. Praise Come the on. Lord. The real man wants you to lift the church up. And the Lord will help us all together, even with the women, in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Can we celebrate him? Now you do me one thing. Do I want to end the service this morning? If you are a real man, you take whatever you have and you will go and sit there because we real men. You lead all of them to that side. Can we keep clapping for all the men? Take your bag, take everything. We are ending service now. You are ending your service there. So let's all go that way. The rest of us stand up. All the men move. Don't you head. Just go that way. God bless you. The rest of us stay standing. Please lead them quickly. Now, is there an announcement? Can we please an announcement for the women only? Not RPTV. Just give me. We are not having time. Yeah. Please, the good woman. Is there a clip they want to give? Okay, can you put it on if we can hear it? If there is something to hear. It's just, okay. So the woman, you will receive more of your notices next two Sundays. Come then. Ah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. I just want to talk to us. If you are a man, please move quickly now to that side. And then you sort all your matters that way, please. Let's do it quickly, quickly, quickly. Praise the Lord. All the women in the house shout hallelujah. Next weekend is our week. Not this one, no. Next weekend, that's After 24th the Easter. to 24th, uh -huh. Uh -huh. is our week. And we want to do it the women way. You understand what I mean? 
We add color, we bring life to everything. On Friday, which is the first day on the 22nd, it's going to be the 70s. We want to go to the 70s. You understand? I want to see you in your week the way it was done in the 70s. I want to see the boogie boogie. I want to see the old ekus. We're taking ourselves out. That is are not invited. So on Friday, the 22nd, I expect to see all of us in church by evening. Can you see what I mean? I'm looking for my own specs, that kind of specs. So the address code is old school. Time is 5 p.m. We want to discuss about mental health. We are going to dance. We want to feel free that day. That is, we take care of the children, but we are going out. Hallelujah. So let's note that on Saturday we'll be here for teachings and we want to have a one-on-one -on -one talk. We want to discuss those things that hurt us. It's going to be us alone. We're going to have no old bad conversation. Come and talk about it. We'll talk about it. And the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. We want to network amongst ourselves. We need to know ourselves and know what we do and relate to one another as women. And on, on Sunday, we want to come and thank God for making us women and for giving us a special day. The Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. Please note, there's Ankara in Oasis. And I want to use this opportunity to appeal, appeal to us. Please, let's take care of this program. Donate. We need your money. We need your presence. We need your ideas. If there's anything you want to do to help us, please meet me or the president. Where's the president now? Or the secretary. The secretary is somewhere here. Where is the secretary? Please raise up your hand. That, give a command, whatever you want to do to help us, and the Almighty God will be with you in Jesus' name. We may shout hallelujah. Behold, what, let's rise up. What manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold, what manner of love the Father has given Let us share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's read our declaration. Psalm 126, verses 1 to 3. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we are like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. This is my year of songs of praise. The Lord has torn my captivity. The Lord will set ambushments against my enemies. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we sing, we are redeemed. Solomon Uche Mike Obu. I thought you are men. Can you go to that side, please? Leave whatever. Just go back. Don't worry. Stay with them. God bless you till they release you. God bless you. Amen. Let's make, let's sing Redeemites. We are 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 Somebody shout the loudest hallelujah. God bless you.
I'll see you on Friday.